Hey guys, welcome back to Mixed Media Salad, a channel created for you by you. I am your host, Ronnie McBride, and today I'm going to do a bit of a project breakdown. I think I've done one in the past. They seem to be um, pretty useful to people. I'm not going to be talking about any particular feature, but what I'd like to do is take a project that I've worked on and kind of break it down and explain how I approached um, you know, the final delivery of the project to the client. Okay, so... This project um, actually brought a lot of attention, and the reason why I wanted to cover it was uh, a lot of people were asking, you know, how do you do this, and um, they'd like to do this sort of thing, and how does Affinity Designer um, work within the uh, and within the whole process as well, too. So what I wanted to do is take a moment to kind of go through this project and kind of show you guys and explain to you guys how the interaction went. So this project was created um, within a week's time, which is plenty of time to do a 10, uh, 10 to 15 second animation, okay? And this is an um, animation that's called motion graphics. So it's usually taking a piece of graphic work and moving it around in the screen and animating in a sort of way to make a motion graphic piece. So that makes it a little bit different than the animation that you might be thinking of, which is like uh, a Pixar movie or a Disney movie where they're animating characters. So this is a different type of uh, animation. That's like character animation, that's story animation. This is motion graphics. Okay, so it's a different type of animation. So I just wanted to kind of make the distinction so you guys are kind of clear for those of you that aren't clear. Because sometimes I get some of these requests, especially from clients, where they're like, can you make this in Flash? Okay, so to me, that's like, make it in Flash. Do you mean, do you want me to animate it? Yeah, can you animate it in Flash? And Flash is just, of course, a means to an end. There's got to be a specific reason why you want to use Flash. And actually, in this day and age, it's I feel like Flash is slowly die, dying out. And, um, you know, at least for these type of things, you know, I wouldn't use Flash for maybe for a character animation. Might be a consideration. But there are other tools like, um, you know, Toon Boom or there's uh, Anime Studio. Uh, there's a bunch of different applications, okay? So anyway, so what we're looking at here is this logo was created by an agency that my client works with, and we obviously share the same client. And so what they did is they had a 10-year anniversary, and they had this logo that they wanted created for the anniversary. So what my client did was they came to me and they said, hey, Ron, we would like to have this graphic animated. And so they came to me and they also kind of had a bit of an idea of what they wanted. They sent me a link to a um, a site, which I'm not even going to repeat the name because I just it, it just doesn't sit well with me about how it works or whatever. But what I know is they have animations on this site for $5. Okay, you can go and you can get a bunch of work for $5. And honestly, I'm not a $5 designer. I, you know, I take pride in my work and I, you know, everything that I do is custom and I work with my clients to, you know, realize what they're trying to do. So they came to me and they said, Hey Ron, could you animate this? And we kind of want it to be like a st the stamp animation that we see here. I said, okay, listen. And, and I said, okay, that's fine, but let's not focus on that. Let's just kind of give me a little bit of information about what we're doing here. Well, you know, they have, they're saying, Hey, you know, we have this big presentation and, you know, we'd like to have this at the end and kind of have be impactful, you know, and, um, you know, and this is where we're kind of going, but we're not quite sure. We're not married to that idea. If you have something better to offer. I said, sure. Okay. That is the reason why clients come to me because they know that I'm not just going to regurgitate something. I'm going to give them an idea. Okay. So my idea was to take this animation and kind of accentuate the idea of this uh, logo being representative of something being strong. You know, the whole idea was being strong. Okay. So what I did is I came up with a couple of ideas and I, I, I looked at this particular logo and it just wasn't fitting. It wasn't fitting my style and what I wanted to communicate as being strong. It just looks like a, a vector logo for anything. And it just it just wasn't strong enough for me to give me any sort of feel. And so that's where Affinity Designer came into the project. What I did with Affinity Designer was I kind of worked out one frame of what I envisioned the environment to be like in my animation, okay? So I'll give you a sample here. 
Let me turn that off and I'll turn this on and I'll turn my background on. And so this is one frame. This is what I came up with because I felt like, you know, it had this very, um, you know, strong feeling. So to be strong, it had to be like something metallic. So I wanted to make my environment me metallic. Okay. And so um, I started with this one frame, kind of cleaned up the logo so it would fit this environment and this look because obviously this would not be as strong as, let me just zoom out of this a little bit. It would not be as strong sitting on this background as what I, what I created. It just didn't, it just didn't fit the style or the look. Okay. So that's part of the reason why, you know, it's important for me to work on one frame to kind of get the style down for my client. So I send this to my client and they say, I like I like the look of this. This looks great. Um, yeah, definitely. Let's 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 move forward with this. Okay. So basically, um, I went through and I kind of you know cleaned everything up and made it exactly how I wanted it to look because I already envisioned how this thing would animate. You know, I felt like a light would kind of swoop in and this thing would kind of appear in a certain way and have some sort of feeling of impact. And, you know, to reessentiate the whole idea of strength, the story of strength. Okay, so after I did that, I um, I exported out individual layers. I exported out my background as one thing, right? So if I turn this off, I just have my background, and if I turn this on and I turn this off, I exported out the the top. Um, uh, image itself. Now I, I did that along with the shadow. Um, if I wanted to do something particular, uh, where I wanted the, uh, a little bit more control of the animation separate from the shadow, I would just do the shadow within my animation tool. But for this particular thing, I just knew that I was going to do a simple fade up, simple skating, a scaling type of, um, animation. And I was not going to worry about the shadow. Okay, so once I did that, I exported out these two things here. Um, there was another version in here too that I did. Actually, I turned this out, you know, to kind of mess with the idea of strong. So there was a different, um, different background as well too. So you know, kind of the stone feel. So you know, I was gonna have to maybe drop in, maybe some dust particles pop off or something like that, and kind of you know kind of shake like it's shaking the whole thing so that was another but that was going to take more time i had seven days to do this i still had to go through getting clients to take a look um first of all i still had to, a client to look at the contract the uh, statement of work an sow right stating exactly what i planned on doing in this animation and what th i needed from them to be able to complete my job and then uh, i send that off to them they sign it i signed it then we start the engagement where i start you know doing some of this design work then i send them the first version they look at it the style style of it they, they say hey you know we're on we lo we love it let's go with that right and um and then um i move into animation so let's move into the animation now so for the animation what i did is uh i imported my graphics okay so i imported my foreground graphic right here the logo itself right and then I also imported the background. Now, in motion here, uh, I'm not going to do a full motion tutorial here, but just to give you an idea, um, this right here is the area where you can pull in your assets by going through the file browser. The inspector is to have control over the, the different parameters and the different layers and the different effects that you put on here. So, uh, for instance, um, uh, let's see, I have a, a, a light right here, and there's all these different parameters here. For, to make adjustments down here is your timeline so everything that you do is actually animated here okay and um, these layers are representative of what you're seeing up here so these are two different ways of kind of uh, viewing and organizing your information the top part is the actual uh, layers um, I could drag up here. These are my tool sets, menu bars here, render settings are also over here and percentage of how I could see this uh, on screen, you know, um, command zero, uh, actually 
excuse me, not command zero, but command plus and com uh, command minus actually zoom in and out. You know, you could also use your trackpad. So a lot of the things that we're doing in other applications, there are some consistencies about how people work in these type of environments. So a lot of the shortcuts you'll find are, are very similar. Okay, so I brought in, I imported my, my two layers, right? And then I started applying effects to them and adding other elements like, um, you know, these light ray, ray loops that are coming in here at this point. You can see right here and here. And what I wanted to do was, um, originally I didn't have this line drawn in. You didn't see that. Um, of course, during the process, I uh, before I started animating, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say this before, but before I started animating, I sent off a storyboard to the client kind of explaining what my vision was for it. And they didn't quite get it, you know, uh, just from looking at it and looking at the words that, you know, that I supplied with it. So uh, I got on a call with them the next day and we sat down and I explained it to them and they said, oh, OK, I, I get it. I understand. Great. Go ahead with it. So I went with it. I put out my first version. They took a look at it. They liked it. But they were like, uh, they had little comments, little comments like, you know, I wish there was a little bit more anticipation um, in the animation before it started. So um, what I did actually the first time around was I had these dust particles actually that I put in here. And what I did is, you know, the, the, you know, they lightly kind of fade in and they float in. And then when it gets to a certain point, they kind of shake vigorously. And then this came in, but it just didn't make sense to them. You know, they looked at it and they felt like it was bubbles rather than dust particles. So that got knocked out. Then I came in and I um, I added this this thing where it was kind of like this laser cutting into the metal and kind of drawing in what will be our logo, okay, which comes in with this big flash. It all adds to the intensity uh, of the whole piece. And then um, then I did a little bit of a, uh, a light going across the logo, just kind of highlighting the text and bringing the focus back to this and then again in close I did a, the little light ray going around the perimeter of the logo itself disappearing and then that way it met my my 10 second requirement for the animation and then the last five seconds um, making it a total of 15 seconds I had it scale up slowly to this point and then uh, the last five seconds it freezes. And the reason why I did that was because the client's request was to be able to uh, add social media links to it, um, to add their website. So they wanted a little space for that kind of stuff to go at the bottom. Okay, so that's pretty much how the project went. That's how I wanted to um, kind of deliver it to my client. And um, that's the process that I use. It's not always the same process every time I go through. I mean, to the extent of, yes, you know, giving a statement of work, getting them to sign off, lay laying out the milestones of, uh, you know, uh, getting approvals on the animation at various stages, like all that stuff. Absolutely. But because it was seven days, I didn't spend a lot of time on the storyboard where I would usually draw those things out. I kind of actually just jumped right in. I had a clear vision of what I wanted for them. Uh, you know, it really was up to me. Um, I knew anything that I did was going to be, you know, different from whatever they've done in the past. And so I just needed to have a full execution because also they were worried about the time frame and getting it done for a show. They wanted to get it to the person who's editing their videos. Um, they wanted to get it to them. And so they were really worried about it. So I couldn't spend too much time showing them like little sketches like I would spend on a bigger project. And you definitely want to do that on a bigger project. In this particular project, it was very important to take the animation and get it as close as possible to how it may look so they can approve the style of it. And then it's just really about animating and telling a story, you know, through the look and the feel, okay? Now, oh, one more thing. Down here, I have some um, some sound. The sound, I have, I have a bunch, you know, I mess with music as well too. I DJ and I have some other, uh, uh, you know, some audio production stuff and audio production tools. So I have a lot of sound effects already on my computer. So I went through these sound effects and I kind of put together a bunch of sounds that I felt actually added to the story and added to the animation to improve the impactful feel of something being strong, okay? And so when I did that, 
Um, you know, I laid that out here and I sent it to the client and it just really just raises the animation. Now, for some people, you know, they may lay down the soundtrack already. They already have an idea of the soundtrack and they animate to that. I kind of actually went a little bit backwards. There's no really right or wrong way. It just pretend, it depends on the situation. So what I like to do is um, lay out my animation of what I want visually to happen and then try to figure out in various points where I'd like to drop the sounds. And then I go back and I refine the animation to kind of keyframe off the sounds itself to kind of bring everything together and make it one cohesive piece. Okay, so let's take a moment to look at the final piece so you guys can see where I ended up after uh, going through this whole entire process. Let me just open up my browser here. I use Vimeo, and some of you may be wondering, why are you using Vimeo? You're on YouTube. Why don't you use YouTube? And the reason why I use Vimeo is because I have a, a pro account. Um, and so what that, uh, it's a plus account, basically, was what they call it. And so that allows me a few extra additional features. Uh, first of all, the, the quality of the video is great. There is no advertisement anywhere on Vimeo as well, too. And also, it gave me the ability to provide my client with a link so they can actually view a sample of the file as I was moving through the process. And that way, we were able to talk and um, I didn't have to upload it somewhere for them to download it. And plus, I don't want them to have access to download the file because, you know, again, it hasn't been totally approved yet. And so it was important that they don't have this file lingering on their computer and then somehow use it or whatever. Um, so I could actually pass protect this too as well and provide them with a link so it's not open to the public unless I enable its ability to be open to the public for viewing. Um, so there's a lot of benefits of using Vimeo. But anyway, here's the animation. And there you have it, guys. That's how I completed an entire 10-second animation within seven days, which included the um, statement of work, the approval of the style board, approval of the storyboard, and then the animation and leaving room for critiques and comments from the client, and then producing the final animation for delivery and the platform that I used, which was Vimeo, to deliver that and manage the communications between myself and the client. If you guys found this video useful, definitely leave me a comment below. Send me a uh, tweet at Mixed Media Salad on Twitter, or you could hit the like button or do all three. I'd appreciate all of them. The more information I know about how many people are finding these videos useful, the more that I can do more focused videos on the things that you guys really care about. Okay, so thanks again. This is Mixed Media Salad, a channel created for you by you. I am your host, Ronnie McBride. Have a great weekend, and hopefully you'll be seeing another video shortly. These videos come out every Friday, but you never know. I just might do a video in between now and Friday, and I actually have a video in mind right now. So thanks again, guys, for watching, and again, we'll see you next time. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to receive 50% off my training, make sure you sign up at MixedMediaSalad.com.